Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the Narans on the go and in the know, wherever you may be. It is November 5, 2019. Know that today, we are one day closer to our goal than yesterday. First article of interest. The New York Times. Iraq is rising against the hateful Iranian occupation. May 11, 2019, 11:19 a.m. Baghdad News. The New York Times for the first time described the large-scale Iraqi demonstrations as being against the obnoxious Iranian occupation. To dominate the joints of the Iraqi state, she revealed that the Iraqi army rejects a request to storm the building of the Turkish restaurant for fear of bloodshed. In detail, the paper says the protests began quietly a month or so ago with sporadic protests. It expanded steadily until last week as more than 200,000 Iraqis marched in Baghdad in the largest demonstration in Iraq modern history, protesting against the Iraqi government and a foreign occupier this time Iran, not America. The protesters have directed their anger against Iran, which they now see as having considerable influence inside their country, and are screaming against Iraqi parties linked to Iran. They shout slogans Free Baghdad, Free Iran by land. This scream spread in the streets and in the squares of the Iraqi capital, in the city of Karbala and in the back alleys and university corridors. These protests have turned into a struggle over who will shape the future of the country. Iraq, along with Lebanon, is a country dominated by Iran and is part of a growing revolt against Iran that is trying to demonstrate its power throughout the Middle East. The revolution is not anti-American, it is anti-Iran, anti-religious anti-politics, says Saad Iskandar the former head of Iraq National Archives. He adds that the protesters are tired of corruption and militias linked to Iran, some of which have developed into a huge mafia. This is more than that. Revolution has a social dimension. A conflict between generations, while Iran is the direct target of protesters' anger, the battle is even greater. It is a conflict between Iraqi youth and an older and more cautious generation and between a political elite and a rising regiment that refuses to lead them. It is, above all, a conflict between those who have benefited immensely since the U.S. invasion that toppled Saddam Hussein, and those who struggle to get crumbs and angrily monitor the distribution of political parties with ties to Iran, positions, jobs and rewards to those close to them. The system, which was implemented after the 2003 invasion, despite being drafted by Iraqis and empowered by Americans, has devoted a system to dividing political power along religious and ethnic lines. Iran has taken advantage of that framework, using it to reflect it in Iraqi politics. As the United States withdrew from Iraq after 2009, Iranian-linked parties expanded their networks within the government. In 2014, Iran took advantage of the war on ISIS, help for militias to fight ISIS, and by 2018 it became so powerful that Iran political parties became dominant in the government. It was Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, head of the Quds force, who brokered the deal that created the current government, the paper said. At the same time, at the grassroots level and among the country youth, there was a growing feeling that Iran was benefiting and expanding at the expense of Iraq, becoming part of the political background of the protests. All our budget goes to Iran to support the IRGC, said Ali Jassim, a construction worker. All ministries and civilian facilities in Iraq run by Iran. We want to get rid of this government. We want the return of our country. Our parents were telling us to shut up. The walls have ears, said Mohammed Alamin, a second-year medical student who worked at a first aid center. But now we have the internet. We have traveled. We can see what the world looks like. We want a different life. We want to be like other countries. We want our rights. Demonstrators demands to get rid of corruption put an end to political parties, and create a presidential rather than a parliamentary system seem reasonable at the same time and almost impossible to achieve. At least, not without bloodshed. This is also difficult to achieve because protesters are increasingly demanding immediate results, as if they wanted to see lawmakers and ministers packing up their bags, getting rid of their characteristic villas in the green zone and completely disappearing. Those politicians who want to work with the protesters realize that the fundamental changes they are demanding, such as new election laws and an eventual new constitution cannot be achieved overnight. Yet the political class style frustrates protesters who are impatient to see the changes begin now. 
Iraqi President Baram Saleh is trying to take steps in this direction by introducing legislation that would eliminate the current system of party lists and allow voters to vote for individual candidates. But in essence, it asks Parliament to adopt a system that costs many of its members seats. There is the political level, the street and the security establishment, says Maria Fontabi, senior Iraq analyst at the International Crisis Group. Protesters, for example, celebrate a sense of freedom and feel empowered through the momentum they created. It not just young males, but for the first time young females and other factions in society, she said. She added that the protesters do not look at what may be the ultimate goal they celebrate that they created this huge protest movement. Prime Minister Adel Abdel Mahdi has been criticized for allowing security forces to try to suppress protests by force. During the first week of October, about 150 protesters were killed, most of them shot, and about 5,500 people were injured, including more than 1,000 members of the security forces, according to a government investigation. This era attracted tens of thousands of people to the protests. Rallies in the range of 20,000 to 25,000 have exploded across the country to nearly 200,000 in the capital. Violence erupted again on Monday, when security forces opened fire on demonstrators as they sought to cross the al Arar Bridge in Baghdad, killing at least five people. Steps swallowed by corruption, the Prime Minister, despite much criticism, has taken steps to improve the lives of Iraqis, expand and supply electricity improve relations with Iraqi Kurds and remove the walls that have divided Baghdad, but he is still a weak leader who owes his position to a political agreement drafted by Iran. So, while Mahdi was able to appoint technocrats in the ministries of electricity and oil, Iran-affiliated parties control at least five key ministries, including the ministries of interior, communications, labor, and social affairs. Corruption is now endemic and it exists even in those ministries that are seen as well-managed. I graduated in engineering, but when I applied for a job at the oil ministry, they asked for $7,500, said 30-year-old Mohammed Fadl. The security forces are divided between lower-ranking and senior officers and between the Ministry of Defense and those in the Interior Ministry, which has brigades close to Iran. These divisions have led to disagreements among security entities over how to confront the demonstrators, who seized a building looming over the Republic Bridge. The army refused to approve a plan to cleanse the building Turkish restaurant, where army officers feared more bloodshed that would provoke greater protests. There is no need to create this big problem, said a senior military official. Speaking of the proposed plan to storm the building, suddenly, Iraqi news channels announced at midnight on Monday that the government had shut down the Internet. There was no explanation, but officials also closed it in early October when they thought the protests were spiraling out of control. Although the government has gradually restored internet service, social media services including Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp have been banned for the duration of the protests. It remains unclear when the demonstrators will remain on the streets. For those who go every day with flags around their necks, such as Abu Jamal, 40, a baker, the answer is, I can pretend for a day, two days, a week, a year or 500 years. Next article of interest. Important statement to the Constitution Amendment Amit E. 211-05-2019-21-58 Baghdad, the Interim Committee to Make Proposals for Constitutional Amendments, on Tuesday, to proceed with the completion of constitutional amendments on time, pointing to open a website through which to receive the views of all segments of Iraqi society including representatives of demonstrators about their vision in the constitutional amendments. The committee said in a statement, at a distinguished moment in the history of Iraq, and a new stage of democracy in the form of a popular and conscious will, and our belief in the need to respond to the real national demands of our people, based on the resolution of the House of Representatives No. 221, on March 11, 2019, which provided for the formation of an interim committee of the House of Representatives. For the purpose of making proposals for constitutional amendments based on Article 142 of the Constitution. Its first meeting be Ayash House Speaker Mohammad Halbusi first and MP Hassan Al Kabi. The statement added that the committee decided to involve the Committee of Wise Men, which invited the religious authority to form in the discussions of the committee. To provide ideas and proposals on constitutional amendments, 
In addition to the involvement of experts of constitutional law professors in Iraqi universities to prepare the necessary formulations to make constitutional amendments. He pointed to the call on civil society organizations and trade unions and competent unions in order to provide the committee with views, ideas and proposals on constitutional amendments, announcing, open a website through which the views of all segments of Iraqi society, including representatives of protesters, on their vision of constitutional amendments. The statement stressed the use of the expertise of the United Nations through its mission in Iraq, and call on the judicial and executive authorities to send their representatives to listen to their views on constitutional amendments. The committee also decided to remain in continuous and continuous meetings to complete the necessary constitutional amendments as soon as possible, and in line with the actual need for the foundations of state building in accordance with constitutional frameworks. Iraqis have taken to the streets since the beginning of last month, and the slogans raised by the demonstrators first reject corruption and demanding reform and job creation, but the ceiling of the demands of the demonstrators rose day by day until the extent of demand to overthrow the government. In addition to the demands of the demonstrators, I highlighted in the media other topics that Iraqi parties have been working on for some time, including the amendment of the Iraqi constitution. This committee is supposed to submit a report to the House of Representatives within a period not exceeding four months, including a recommendation of the necessary amendments to the Constitution. Next article of interest. Human rights calls for national dialogue under the auspices of the United Nations to resolve the crisis in the country. November 5, 2019, 1048 Baghdad. The High Commission for Human Rights in Iraq called on Tuesday for a national dialogue under the auspices of the United Nations to resolve the crisis in the country. A statement issued by the Commission received Euphrates News a copy, that while stressing the High Commission for Human Rights to ensure freedom of opinion and expression and demonstration and peaceful assembly and unification of legitimate demands in order to promote human rights, it calls on all parties to inject blood and begin a national dialogue under the auspices of the United Nations United States. The Commission called on the demonstrators to maintain the momentum of the demonstrations in places that do not affect the functioning of public facilities and not to disrupt them in order to enhance the provision of services to citizens and ensure their rights, which was one of the basic demands of the demonstrators and monitor the government's response to these demands and constructive cooperation between security forces and demonstrators to protect public and private property. Next article of interest. Abdul Mahdi discussed security developments in the country with security leaders in the presence of Habusi and Zadine. November 5, 2019, 11:23, Baghdad. The Prime Minister and Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Adel Abdul Mahdi, held a meeting last night in the presence of the President of the Supreme Judicial Council, Faik Zidan, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mohammed Halbasi, and the Ministers of Defense and Interior and a number of security leaders. According to the Prime Minister's statement that the meeting came to discuss the developments of the situation and procedures necessary to maintain security and order, the statement added that the meeting affirmed the support of the judicial and legislative authorities to the efforts of the government and security agencies to impose security and stability throughout the country, protect demonstrators and private and public property and economic facilities and ensure the regularity of work and permanence and smooth movement of citizens. Next article of interest. Barzani announces support for the Kurdistan region of Iraq out of the ordeal. November 5, 2019, 5586 Baghdad, president of the Kurdistan region, Nachirvan Barzani, said on Tuesday that the region is making efforts to get Iraq out of the current crisis experienced by the protests in Baghdad and the central and southern provinces of the country. This came in a press conference held today after a meeting with the president of the Republic, Baram Saleh, the president of the parliament of the region. Ra was fake and the Prime Minister of the region Masroor Barzani and leaders of political parties and forces in Kurdistan. We held an important meeting on the situation in Iraq, and we all agreed to support the legitimate rights demanded by the demonstrators in terms of services and transparency, Barzani said during the conference. He added that it is important for the Kurdistan region to have a unified position on the situation in Iraq to support all political forces in Iraq under these circumstances. We are all responsible for the situation of Iraq and each according to its location, the reform steps initiated by the Iraqi government and we call for their speedy implementation. Next article of interest. 
Cabinet meets with conservatives to discuss protesters' demands. November 5, 2019 11.49 Baghdad, the government will hold a meeting with the governors to discuss the demands of the demonstrators, a government source said Tuesday. The source told Euphrates News that the Council of Ministers will hold its meeting, on Tuesday, in the presence of governors, noting that the meeting will be held at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The source added that the meeting comes to discuss the discussion of the demands of the provinces in order to vote. Next article of interest, Committee on Constitutional Amendments begins its first meeting in the House of Representatives, November 5, 2019 11.38 Baghdad. The Committee on Constitutional Amendments held a meeting in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. A parliamentary source told Euphrates News that the Committee on Constitutional Amendments began its first meeting of the Parliament building this morning. The House of Representatives voted on a Committee for Constitutional Amendments after the demonstrations that began early last month, which included the change of the Constitution. Next article of interest. The Foreign Minister and the UN Representative discussed the government measures to meet the demands of the demonstrators. November 5, 2019 to 1919 p.m. Baghdad Al Ghad Press. Foreign Minister Mohammad Ali Al Hakim met on Monday with Union Secretary General Kofi Annan, representative in Iraq, Jenin Blanchard. The meeting reviewed the overall security, political, and UN support to Iraq and the government actions to meet the demands of the demonstrators, the ministry said in a press release. The foreign minister stressed the importance of the United Nations to play a role in supporting and assisting Iraq in various aspects humanitarian, security, political, and service and appreciated the efforts made by the United Nations in the context of supporting Iraq, and to achieve stability in it. More articles of interest to come. Don't forget to hit that like subscribe button and check out the CEP Currency Exchange Planner, the link is in the description panel. Make sure to tell them, the Dinare and sent you so you get the extra pre-negotiated discount as my subscriber. I encourage you, knowledge is power, stay informed and stay alert. Over and out for now. The Dinarian.